Hey guys, James here from Replica Reviews and we have probably one of the nicest guns I've ever had the privilege of reviewing and it's the new FX Wildcat in 22 calibre flavour. Now for those of you that have been living under a rock, um, you would have seen that this is basically going to be, I'm not sure it's taking over from the, the Bobcat, the Bobcat is a ballpup hybrid whereas this is a dedicated ballpup, but this is their new kind of flagship until the impact maybe comes out at some point in the future. Um, and what a rifle. Now this was very, very kindly been loaned to us um, by Damien from Pull the Trigger down in Plymouth. So thank you for that. Um, and we've had the joy this morning of just getting out with Chris who stood behind the camera there um, and just testing it and just shooting it and, and having an absolute breathe. Now, off the bat, as you'll see, it is a bullpup. All right, it's a very, very short rifle. Now, unlike the, uh, the Bobcat, which is basically just an FX Royale, but shrunk down into a bullpup stock, this is a dedicated bullpup rifle. And it's really well balanced. I was quite surprised. All of your balance point is basically in this part of the gun here. Now, when you hold it, it does sit pretty much where the uh, where the cocking lever is here. So it's really easy just to shoulder. Now, it weighs, I think it's about six and a half pounds. It's not too heavy in the grand scheme of things. Um, and it's made superbly. I mean, as Swedish engineering goes, this is something else. Um, now, you would have seen various videos showing, you know, all sorts and things with the stock off. Now, we're not going to take the stock off today because, to be honest, apart from the bar that goes from the cocking lever, um, well, from the trigger, sorry, all the way back to where the hammer is, there's not really much to see in there that's worth kind of taking it apart. The only thing that's worth noting is a bar rather than springs, so it's very, very predictable trigger and a very light trigger at that, which is pretty good. Now, the keen eye of you would have seen that I've topped it off um, for testing today with a Hawk Sidewinder. This is one that we had spare and uh, yeah, certainly does the business. Now we'll start at the front and we'll work our way back features wise. Now at the front you have a fully shrouded barrel that basically goes all the way back to here. Um, you can take the end cap off and there is a little adapter so you can put a moderator on. But to be completely honest with you, it's, it's not needed. The loudest part of shooting this gun is hearing the little free floating hammer in the back going ting next to your ear. Um, the, the muzzle report from this is, is virtually negligible really. Filling comes from the front. Um, it's just a simple push in, push out, and your gauge is on the front there. It's a 230 fill bar, um, bar fill, sorry, and they reckon that you get around 280 shots, which is incredible. Um, now, we haven't had a chance to test it um, to that extent this morning, unfortunately, but we have, well, we did a whole morning testing and shooting, really, doing target shooting, and we haven't had to fill it up once, which is something quite else. So, something that's used to a HW100 where you have to fill up every 60 or so shots. To be able to then go out and have a full morning's filming with one of these and not have to fill is something else. Now moving back, you will notice that thankfully FX has listened to the market and they've put the cocking lever right where it should be, which is in the middle. None of this try to flick your ear and tickle the bottom of your ear low rubbish. It's right here and it's really, really easy to use. We take it out of the stand, um, come up, you'll see that just from here, it's really easy. And then you fire it the safety catch off virtually no report which leads me on to my next point really which is the trigger it's one of the lightest smoothest triggers i've ever come across now it is adjustable and it does come with a manual which is fairly thick that tells you how to adjust it but me being me i haven't read it it doesn't need adjusting to be honest with you it's just so crisp you just bring it back safety obviously then forward like so it just doesn't, there's no break to it at all. Moving back from this point then obviously is the safety catch. Now this is my only gripe with the gun. Now you have to understand in the grand scheme of things this is kind of like minimal. The safety catch is really easy to flick on and off. Now for a target shooter, brilliant, not a problem. For somebody that just wants a safety catch that works, superb because you know it is very very smooth. But what I did notice the other evening is on the corner of my coat as you bring the rifle up, you can knock the safety catch off. There's no um, kind of a positive engagement. If you're used to like a fire arc or something like that, when it goes into the safe position, you'll feel an absolute click. And then when it goes into fire, you'll feel the same. Whereas this one you don't, which is a little bit weird, but you know, nothing too major. Okay, so now for one of the really, really good points about this rifle, something I've really enjoyed this morning. Now, obviously, if you are able to fire this many shots, you're gonna to need to reload with this little bad boy quite a lot. Now it uses an eight shot rotary magazine, similar kind of principle to what you would have seen in Umarex pistols for any of you pellet shooters out there. And you just push the pellets in, pull the cocking lever to the rear, and then you see it's got a little a ball button there. Push it in, 
index it round so it clicks, it just shows it's in line with the barrel, push that forward, and you're good to go, and then you just reload, and it just indexes it around, and it is so, so simple, it's really, really a breath of fresh air, because all you need to do, I've run out of pellets, take the mag out, put my new one in, click it round, forward again, and it's that simple, there's no faffing around with latches, or trying to get things kind of slightly in the right place, or lined up, or along little rails, or, you know, God forbid those little single shot loading trays that are the bane of everybody's lives, it just goes in, simple as anything. Now, one thing I did notice as well, it's probably not going to come out very well in the camera, is if we pull this back, take the magazine out, the pellet probe is scooped. It's designed to work with FX branded pellets, which for those of you in the know, or those of you that kind of know anything about pellets, they all come out of the JSB factory. So if you've got your JSB exacts, your Daystate Sovereigns, which is what we were testing the rifle with earlier, um, you know, they will all work flawlessly. Now what we did notice is if you use um, I think it was the super fields we were using. It can feel a little bit notchy as you're bringing that, uh, as you're bringing the bolt forward. It can feel a little bit not notchy, but if you use the sovereigns, it just glided straight in, um, and we got the best groupings. Now, obviously, we've done a field test for it. That's probably live already, depending on which way we go around. If not, it'll be live in the next couple of days. And as you can see, the the groupings. I mean, these are the shoot and sees um, when we were testing. And then those are the final groupings that we took of the day. Now I can cover that with a five pence piece um, coin or a, a 10 cent euro coin for, a, for those of you across the water. And that is from a bench rested position. It's just the accuracy is superb. Build quality second to none. Um, it's probably one of the best ones that I've come across. Okay, so at this point in the video, you might be thinking, James, you've gone mad. Why have you zoomed in on this bit? But it's another really good feature that I wanted to just show you. Now, unlike a lot of wooden stocks, it doesn't have a cheek rest per se. You know, the molded nice ones everybody sees all carved out. But it does have this really, really nice smoothed off action. And if you look at it sort of dead on, you can see just from the curve here that it is almost like an overall shape. Now, bringing it up to your cheek and looking through the scope it's so comfortable and you might be sat there wondering you know in the winter it's going to get a bit cold um, but I can assure you it's freezing out here at the moment um, and the only thing that we did notice it's not cold on the cheek but there was a bit of condensation that builds up around here obviously where you've been breathing um, and uh, it's a little bit weird it's the first time I've ever seen it with a rifle but that's purely just down to the temperature that we're uh, enjoying at the moment but very very comfortable nonetheless and all right, so one thing that I do want to point out, um, a lot of videos have already gone through this, but I just want to make sure that I cover it as well. Now, a lot of people, when they first pick up an FX air gun, will do this, and you'll hear that little rattle. Now, the long and short is, a lot of hammers in most rifles have got a spring that pushes it forward, so the hammer, when it hits um, the back of the, the valve, it basically goes bang. But remember, for every kind of action going forward, there's an equal one coming away. So you get that kind of bounce on the back of it. Now that is what causes a lot of wastage in a lot of guns. Now the FX doesn't have that because you can hear it's a free floating um, little hammer in the back. So when you cock it, there's no rattle. It's under tension, it's ready to come forward. And then when you release it, it's then forward to rattle again. Now what that does is basically it's coming forward and then it's coming back. And what in the action of coming back, it's not bouncing on the back of the, the hammer. So you're saving air, so that's why you get that ridiculous shot count from the front because of this little valve inside. Now it's a little bit peculiar, when you first fire it, you do hear it, and when you're firing it up like this, it's one of the loudest parts of shooting a gun, unless you're shooting at steel like we were this morning. All you really hear is that little ting from the hammer coming back on the back of the valve and then shooting straight back off, saving the air, which is superb. Um, it's a really neat feature. Okay, so final thoughts really. Um, as you may have probably guessed from the review, I am absolutely in love with this rifle. If you're after a new PCP rifle, you're into the whole ballpup thing, then please look at this. Unlike things like the Bobcat, the Matador things, um, or even the Daystate, dare I even mention the Pulsar, this has been done properly. It's not a hybrid or a combination of, or a mixed match of parts that somebody had left over after a year and thought at the Christmas do they go nuts and build a ballpark. This was designed from the ground up. Now build quality is just immense. Um, and the accuracy as you'll see from the, from the separate shooting test that we've done over at Ronnie Sunshine's is something else. Now for 899 British pounds, you really cannot go far wrong with this rifle. 
obviously we've put a sidewinder on the top here quite an expensive scope but you can put a, a kind of work on a mid-range scope and have a really good setup for sub £1,000 which in a modern day when ballpups naming no names come out at like £2,000 and 1600 quid and things like that to have something that will outshoot any of those rifles for less than a grand is unbelievable would I personally buy one absolutely would I buy it in 2.2 which is what we've got available to us at the moment probably not I am a 177 shooter FX have been promising the 177 Wildcat over here in the UK for quite a while um, none of our suppliers can get hold of them which is an absolute shame the day that they do I can assure you there will be one in my locker within about 20 minutes um, but for the moment the 2.2 just I've never really been a 2-2 shooter I'll be honest but today has, has been a bit of a, an eye-opener it's to quite you know it's not a limiting caliber a lot of people as I was coming in the shooting industry said yeah 2-2 drops off quick and you know this that the other shooting it today I can assure you it was flying flying down that range at quite some whack we've got a pallet over there that was zero on the first thing in the morning before we all went up and it's blown a hole clean through that so it's opened my eyes up to a different world of calibers but for the moment if it comes out in 177 I would I would buy one um, I am hanging on for the impact if anybody knows any information about that let me know ASI don't um, and FX don't really know what's going on at the moment which is a bit of a nuisance but as soon as that comes out I will be getting one we got one on pre-order but anyway back to the conclusion if you're after just a solid rifle then please look at this rifle if your local RFDs have got one in stock go and have a look if you like me you'll just pick it up and fall in love with it it's balanced beautifully built you know I haven't seen build quality like this from an air rifle in quite a while and the accuracy is just sublime now if you want to know a little bit more feel free to go across to our Facebook page um, I've got a whole album up there and various tests and things and links to the blog where we've done some pretty in-depth um, reviews and tests and bits and pieces so feel free to check that out and um, failing that just put a comment in the box below and uh, I'll try and get back to you as quick as I can so until then a massive thank you to the guys that pulled the trigger again for the loan of this rifle and I shall see you on our next video